And um, talking about the economic data released just yesterday and, of course, today, the unemployment rate yesterday and today, the inflation uh, number, we have uh, Professor Atman Ipo, a professor of economics and public policy at the University of Uyo, joining us now to weigh into these um, data. Thank you very much, Professor, for joining us on the program. Good morning. Good morning. Thank you for having me. Good morning. So we have higher unemployment rate coupled with um, high inflation rate equals to higher misery index. Now, this is the, sp the stimulus package of about 2.3 trillion or, or about 4% of GDP. And of course, the recent most celebrated um, exit from recession. How disturbing do you find these data and what economic policy other than the Keynesian model of counter-cyclical stimulus should be adopted to achieve inclusive, accelerated and sustainable growth? Well, thank you very much. The numbers are very disturbing, uh, but not surprising because we've had these problems for a very long time. In economics, once your unemployment rate is more than 5%, Although these days they give uh, developing countries seven percent, once it's more than five percent, then you should look at it as a crisis. So by the time we reach thirty-three point four percent, and for you for two point five percent, definitely is very very disturbing. Uh, when you when you when you put that uh, uh, with the rising inflation rate, you have what the economists call uh, we have a positively slope Phillips curve. That means there's no more trade-off between unemployment and uh, inflation. They are all rising. And it is for this reason that uh, we should not celebrate the, the slight or the fragile uh, recovery of the fourth quarter when GDP grew by 0.11%. Uh, because the, the, the high unemployment rate, whether you call it underemployment or unemployment, uh, shows that the economy is producing at below full employment, very below full employment, and is worrisome. And so... Uh, uh, you are right, the typical Keynesian policies may not do it alone because the crisis we have affects both the demand and the supply side of the economy. So you don't need just the Keynesian uh, policy mix. You need uh, uh, to look at the supply side also, look at the, bot the bottlenecks, the binding constraints in the economy and release the binding constraints. So you need both sides, both mm -hmm. the, the fiscal side and the investment policies to be put in place. And I suspect what I would want to advise is that the government's uh, economic uh, sustainability plan, uh, which they put together, should be implemented like yesterday, uh, especially the agriculture and the housing component of that plan. Uh, it will go uh, a long way to help in the unemployment. Uh, in fact, it's a, it's a national crisis, if we, are, if we have to be honest. Uh, right. And that is why you see rest TV. And what I like... Let me say that I commend the MBS for what they've done also in terms of looking at the categories, in terms of uh, those who have finished uh, uh, primary school, those who have finished secondary school, those who have finished universities, and so on and so forth. And for, a long, for some time now, even PhDs have entered the unemployment uh, mm. uh, yeah. uh, equation. And so, so it, it, it means that by the time you finish secondary school, you shouldn't even be looking for a job. Uh, most everybody go to university. There were years in this country where awaiting result for school start, you get a job. So it is really a, a crisis. And uh, our worry is that uh, if it's not checked, checked, uh, checked uh, uh, seriously, it might lead to a lot of uh, social uh, uh, vices and social uh, crises. Well, so, all right, professor. And, and and there are a lot of ways to check this. I I, I just mentioned one. The uh, uh, economic sustainability plan to be to be implemented as of yesterday, uh, especially when this pandemic came, it wasn't the situation. And, 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 and also, government should look at a lot of its sub, a lot of its sectors and see what can be done. For example, the issue of security. Nigeria it remains one of the under police countries in the world. If we if we recruit a lot of our young men and women into the security forces, it will help uh, cushion the unemployment rate. And uh, public works should be. Uh, uh, Put in place because you see, you mentioned the misery index. The misery index is just is more than unemployment and inflation. In fact, unemployment and inflation is more of a discomfort index. The misery index, you have to look at the lending rate, which is very high, so nobody borrows to invest in the real sector. You have to look at the poverty uh, incidence because poverty and unemployment are 
related. When you mm. put all this together, then you can see why some of us argue that there's no need to celebrate the fourth quarter uh, mm. uh, very much. All right. all right, Professor. Uh, but interestingly, underemployment uh, declined and by about the same magnitude, 5.8%, as the uh, increase in unemployment. This looks uh, coincidental. Does it mean that uh, the number of un underemployed individuals suddenly went out of their menial jobs and they were, that they were doing yeah. uh, to fall uh, into the unemployed yeah. category? How would you explain yeah, you this uh, coincidence? Yeah, under, underemployment implies two or three things. In that context, if you work 20 hours or less before the survey, uh, you're underemployed. If you are doing things beyond your skill, for example, you are a trained mechanical engineer, eh? but you are found selling research cars in a kiosk, you're underemployed. My worry about unemployment is that, let me tell you why I don't take it serious, because in our context, uh, uh, possible cars will say, well, at least they are doing something, let's ignore them. But that's not the issue, because these people have been trained. You'll be surprised that you have engineers and mega doctors doing jobs that they're not trained for. So. I suspect that a lot of them were not, not participate in the survey. And then uh, uh, maybe some, a few of them are also maybe migrated to the former sector to look for jobs. So that's why maybe you have a slight uh, decline in underemployment. But for me, uh, underemployment to be added to the unemployment rate and taken together as one, because uh, in our context, underemployment is as, is as, uh, is as unhealthy for the economy as unemployment. Right. True. Okay, let's look at the state-by-state state, uh, breakdown. Imo State, again, had the highest um, unemployment rate, followed by Adamawa, Cross River, Taraba, and Akwaibom in that order. Now, aside from Imo, the worst performing states are in the south and northeast. Akwaibom is a high oil producing state which receives um, substantial uh, FAC allocation. What is the problem of Akwaibo, your state, and of course, Imo state, my state, that make them perpetual laggards? Well, I, 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 I wouldn't know. States, states are eager to dispute <laughs> these numbers. And I'm sure you see them dispute these numbers. But the point is, I see, if you're oil producing, it doesn't mean that uh, you have industries that, that, uh, that will generate jobs. Most of the states depend on federal uh, allocation. They get the allocation of the pay salaries. So what are the industries in these states that are, that are creating jobs? The bottom line is that states have to uh, industrialize. The economy has to, has to industrialize, diversify, so to create jobs. Oil producing jobs means that you get more revenue from the center to distribute. They, they give you the allocation and you pay salaries. Most of these states, their IGR cannot pay salaries in most of these states. So, uh, so, uh, so if you look at them empirically, you see why the employment is very, very high. Now, a lot of them are not into agriculture. For example, like State, for example, is that it does vast agricultural land, but food is very expensive here. Yeah. So that's the paradox. So because your oil producing does not mean that uh, uh, you have low unemployment. Don't forget that the oil sector itself is an enclave. It doesn't hire too many people because it's driven by technology. You know. So uh, so uh, uh, so this is why you are seeing these uh, these numbers. Although I'm very sure that states will dispute these numbers, and I think for states. To dispute these numbers, they should begin to have their own bureau of statistics that will generate their own data, do their own survey, and maybe look at their own conditions and then see how it affects uh, uh, employment uh, in their respective states. Because you see, there are global standards for measuring un unemployment, and countries use that global standard, the, the ILO, to, to, to look at their own reality and uh, compute their unemployment rate. So, uh, uh, I'm not surprised that uh, these states have high unemployment. Just have to go to the states and see the number of youths walking around the streets doing nothing. Professor, I, and also Oshun State has the lowest unemployment rate. What, in your opinion, has the state done differently in terms of uh, job creation? I don't know much about Oshun State, but I know that the southwestern states like Lagos are uh, doing quite a bit in terms of... Uh, uh, trying to uh, industrialize, trying to add value, revitalizing their industry, their uh, money uh, uh, yeah, industries. And this could be part of it. And don't forget that the Southwest also, whether they say it or not, there is a regional development uh, framework where all the states sort of uh, come together to drive development in, in their respective states. So this could be why they have better numbers uh, than the rest. 
All right, uh, Professor, before uh, we let you go there, MPC meeting is scheduled for next week. Looking at these um, um, economic data, the high inflation numbers, and of course the unemployment um, data, what um, uh, policy direction are you hoping to see? Well, as I said earlier, inflation rate, unemployment, they are all rising. So we have a rising Phillips curve, which is very, very, very dangerous for the economy. I would expect aggressive uh, policy measures. For example, government to, as I said, implement what they have on paper as of yesterday. The central bank, I suspect, may leave the rates the way they are, but they should now look at their, 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 their as they've been doing, their development functions, see how they, can, how they can create incentives for the private sector to, uh, to be active and generate uh, jobs. But this has been taken very seriously. So that's what I can recommend in terms of uh, uh, the MPC. Because what we have now, monetary policy cannot do much, in my view. Central Bank can only activate their development policies and assist the economy. And one, of, one way of doing that is to create incentive for the private sector. And government should implement its investment policies, and they're all over the place, you know. Uh, so these delays in implementation is part of the problem that we are having. All right, thank you very much, uh, Professor Abel, for giving us your time today. We do appreciate thank it. You thank, you thank you very you. much, and do thank have you. a great day.